Now we'll create the purchase item and spend category. So let's start with spend category. Ask is maintain spend categories. And here we'll find three options. So we'll go to this maintain spend categories without hierarchy. What it means is that you want to create a spend category without a hierarchy, without assigning a hierarchy. Second option says that you want to create a spend category under a hierarchy. Third one says, no, just create a hierarchy. So we don't want to create a hierarchy. We know how to create it, right? So we need to do it again. We'll just go to this third option, maintain spend categories without hierarchy. You click on this add button here. And spend category name. Let's think of a good spend category. Uh, let's say luxury cars. And ships. Something like this. I'm just making it up. Okay. If any text applies, freight applies, other text applies, you just need to select these values. Track asset. Uh, this is we would do when the asset chapter will come Not right now. So no need to go to this side here. Spend category display. A name only is sufficient enough. Spend category usage. Uh, so it would be used in expense. In your procurement, your supply invoice, ad hoc payment, no, we will not use it. Okay, inactive, no. So, if a requisition fulfillment source is, if you select this in requisition, what should be the fulfillment source? It should be purchase order. Uh, the venue category mapping again is for your intercommit transactions, not right now. And if you want to give anything here, and if anything is mandatory, please go ahead. Otherwise, just say fine. So remember luxury cars and rails. Okay, so spend getting it is done. Let's focus on a purchase item. Create. Ah. Create purchase item. And we'll say my favorite sporty Lambo. Uh, fastest and dream car for boys. Spend category. It's a spider actually. Spend category.
So spider lambo is done. I identified is this one system delivered. And now let's create one account number. You account first. Let me show you the account posting rules. Now this is mandatory. Huh? Uh, when you create uh, the spend categories or revenue categories, the ideal approach is check with the R2L team what should be the right ledger account for the spend category, where it should hit, and add that spend category or revenue category there itself. Don't wait uh, that okay, somebody will provide me details and then only. It's a good practice. Once you create this uh, dimensions, add them into account posting rule sets. So whenever somebody use this, it doesn't get uh, to a wrong ledger account. So as you can see, all the account types are expense. We have to add it on the spend. So let's go ahead and create a ledger account. How we can do that? Go to the account set. Account set and it. Identifier, I'll give it a unique number, 9999999. Account set name, luxury cars. Okay, and as you know, it has to be an expense account. Click done. Now go to view account posting one set. <clears throat> the reddit posting rule and we'll add a line habibi here okay okay So we'll give that same ledger account. Okay, here we'll give the dimension that the spend category is what luxury. Hit OK. And done. So almost we have done everything. Let me think of uh, supplier is done your company's GMSUC will use. Assigning the roles to this gentleman. Right? I'll cover this an intercompany chapter also. Then you go back to your company. Okay. And then again, remember you have to 
set up the revenue categories and spend categories mapping with each other. So you have to say intercompany interest, intercompany interest payable like that. You have to create your revenue category, spending in that way, and then you have to map them. Remember, whenever we create a spend category, that gives you a revenue category mapping option. Whenever you create a sales item, that will give you an option to uh, map it with a purchase item also. So you have to create those specific uh, items also. And the last part would be go back to your company. And then I will show you. And then there is a like DP part also in the customer invoice. We'll see that too. Then you come here on the related action. Okay, then you go to your company. Come on. I don't know. Oh. No, 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 Edit company. Where, where is that? Okay, yes, edit company into the file. Okay, then basically just select all this to all into the new files. And here, my fantastic team, you have to come here and then you have to add it. Okay, you say initiate allowed and you give a check. This person doesn't have access. You would have a plus sign here to add the company. And then you will allow the details like initiate allowed means intercompany transaction allowed with this company. So GMS USA can do transaction with GMS Canada. Initiate allowed, yes. Okay, settle only means if you want to settle down the payments, click on this checkbox. What type of payment can be processed within these two companies? So cash, check, transaction, direct deposit, EFT, manual, all these payment types are available. Default payment type, like we would be paying the intercompany by check only. And then Royal Bank of Canada checking. Transfer, suppose you are doing intercompany transfer of assets, then transfer asset as original, means no changes. So if you can read out the description here, when this is checked, Assets are transferred to the transfer to company within the same in-service date, total asset cost, and accumulated depreciation as the asset in transfer from company. So nothing gets changed. Your in-service date, cost, all remain same. When not checked, assets are transferred to the transfer to company with asset equal to the net book value, means whatever the net book value of that day, in-service date is specified within transfer to company. And that's how it works. Then you give and give a memo and record intercompany receipt. This is very important. You have to click on this. And then you have to mention a bank account for intercompany receipt. So record intercompany receipt is when you create the transactions of customer invoice, right? So a receipt ha has to be generated that, okay, we acknowledge that you are, have ordered these items and we'll deliver it. So kind of intercompany receipt it generates and we'll see in the intercompany chapter and the bank account, which would be used for this intercompany receipt, like receiving the payments and all those things. This is BOFA means Bank of America. Okay, we should not uh, read it out in a different way. BOFA clearly means, and you will find this BOFA, and almost, almost all the implementations. They call Bank of America as BOFA, US people. Okay. Now, let's think about something else. Da, 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 da. Okay, so once it's done, so we can start our supply transactions, I believe. Let's create, let's see the BP first.
Okay. Now, see, there are 11 steps here. So, first is initiation. Only initial supply account match process with invoices procurement return does not have match status. Okay. Maybe this tomorrow I will cover this. Not supply invoice will be able to recommend supply invoice. Take care, then it will go to account to return the specialist. But the point is, we have to assign a few roles like call center manager, project manager. So AP data entry specialist role we have to assign to Adam Carlton. So let's go to his profile. AP data entry specialist and let's assign this role for GMS US. These are role-based security groups assigned to uh, positions and for companies only, to call centers, for the and all those things. So this is done. Let's go to create supplier index. Procurement is very big module. Okay, we'll put GMS USA here. Supplier is Adani. Okay, currency is USD, invoice date is this, invoice received date, let's say 30th only. Okay, control total amount, if you know. Okay, payment term is not 10 days, due date is this. Or payment type, if you want to, reference type, I told you it's like just the uh, PTMs and all those things. Supplier invoice number. Remember, uh, when supplier sends the document to us, that has its own number. That is a supplier invoice number. So that invoice number we have to key in. And so to invoice type. Remember, we have selected a spend category, and by default, it has picked up that spend category. So we can change it. Okay, so we can say spider. Now you see it will get changed spider Lambo. And address or okay, we define taxable sales let's get rid of this and we can say this would cost thousand five hundred okay 
call center if you want to add any. And these are fine. I'll hit submit here. And as you can see, it got unassigned. It means some role has not been assigned to that uh, process. See that. So let's see the process. Process history. Yeah. Let's see where it got unassigned. Approved by cost center manager. Okay, so we, let's assign that role to Teresa Senado. So let's assign that role to Teresa Senado. Oh. So Teresa Senado here. First, we have to assign the role. I'm assigning this to move. Let's select a previous date here. GMS USA. Let's let the other ten thousand. What is wrong here? So, who is the cost center manager then? Mm -hmm. so. so now. Let's go to reassign task. Let's assign that. And the supplier is another port. Another port. Okay. Now 
Yeah, let's see what's the status of this one. Hmm. So it's showing Teresa Serrano now. Hmm, call center manager. Doesn't it the same? Which call center we had selected? Office of CEO. Who is the call center manager here? Teresa Serrano, right? Hmm. Okay. So let's proxy as a channel. Just the invoice. Okay, let's approve it. It's got approved. Let's see the accounting of it. Approved. Perfect. Now let's see the accounting. As you can see, it has it to the ledger account, which we had selected in the APR. Okay. And if you look at the supplier invoice back, if you go to supplier, the balance due, which we have to pay. Now, this is not like customer that we have to take. This is what we have to pay back to the supplier. So that's why I requested that create different scenarios, prepare an Excel sheet. And as when you create adjustments, now, if you go to this invoices and payments, okay. So this is invoice amount, balance due is this, and currency is this. So like this, supply reference number, which is like the invoice number which we had given. Now, if you want, you can create an adjustment from this invoice or you can pay it. So if you want to pay this invoice, Click on this related action, and then we'll see this in this uh, what you call settlement and also. But here also we see that. So let's see. Are you sure you would like to pursue this operation? Yes, I am, ma'am. And hit OK. Okay. So this is what fifteen hundred dollars. Click on process. And do, 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 refresh. It's done. Settlement run number is 5058. It's approved. Now, if you look at this invoice, okay, you can see the accounting of supplier payment also. So look at the accounting. Payment group, where is that? Actually, if you want, you can print a check for this. Print checks. Let 
refresh 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 it's completed if you look at now again you have to design this using bert layout so that's like uh, an sme job but this is a standard layout looks like check layout but in real world you will design it as per the check parameters so let's get rid of this and if i look at my settlement run again and if i go to supplier invoice hmm. See, this is paid and if i look at the other reports okay no balance due see nothing i did for shipping now nothing so we'll stop here guys